I just want to show you really quick with this video how to make a portable printing station. Um, like I mentioned on the first day of class, if you have an old table or drawing desk or workbench or something that has a nice flat surface on it um, that you don't mind or your family doesn't mind you mounting some clamps to, then by all means use that. Um, but this is a really simple basic uh, system for printing anywhere. So that way you can take it out to the garage, you can do it in the house, you can move it wherever you need it to be. And then when you're done, you can put it away, which is kind of nice. So first of all, we're going to need some clamps. Um, these are some AD, e, AWT clamps. You can get a bunch of different brands. Uh, the other common one is the Jiffy or Speedball. And you'll notice that this one has some countersunk sort of angles in it, whereas this one's flat. And that'll dictate what kind of screws you want to use when you're mounting them. For the most part, they should come with their own screws, but if they don't, you can just go to a hardware store and get a real simple a flush mount screw for the AWT, or something that looks a little bit more like a metal, sheet metal screw for the uh, Jiffy or Speedball kind that has a flat, flat mount on the inside of the, uh, the head of the screw. So to do this, we need those clamps, I need a board, I need a drill and a screwdriver, and I need um, some sort of contact paper. It's on the materials list. I need a piece of mylar, also on the contact, you know, on the uh, materials list. And then I have my screen already, which this is just an old screen. You'll notice it's got some stain on it from it being used. And I'll talk a little bit about that more when I make the video um, for preparing and cleaning your screen. So we'll get into that a little bit. If you don't have it to start, it's not the end of the world. I've just found it's kind of helpful to have a screen to sort of tell me how far apart to have the clamps when I'm mounting them down to the board. You're going to want some duct tape and a Sharpie if I didn't already mention those. Um, and we can get started. So I'm going to go ahead and set the Mylar aside because I don't need that to start or the duct tape. I'm going to need those to finish the project. Um, and this is just some three-quarter inch MDF, which stands for medium density fiberboard. Um, it's used a lot for cabinet making, um, some prefab decorations for exteriors of houses. It's, you know, really easy to run through a CNC machine to cut into different shapes and different designs into it, and then they just seal it. Um, it's really similar to particle board, but it's just a finer um, wood pulp that's turned into a board. Um, you can use birch, you can use oak, you can use all sorts of fancy woods that have a nice flat veneer surface. Um, but that's the main thing you're looking for is just something that's got a nice veneer on it. Now, if you have an old workbench that you're just gonna mount your clamps down to, um, but it doesn't have a nice work surface, you can sometimes buy just like a quarter inch thick um, piece of this just to put down on top of the workbench and then mount your, your clamps through that, you know, just to kind of hold it in place. And, uh, work with that. So I'm going to set my screen right here where I want it. So this is a 20 inch by 24 inch screen. They always give you the measurement of the outside of the frame. So you're always going to lose about six inches in each direction of frame and then work area inside it. You don't want to print too close to the frame because the way the mesh is stretched causes images to print different out here than they do in the middle. So if you kind of imagine it's like a screen door. They're stretching it for four, four different directions and you have tension. And that tension is really located about three inches in from the edges where you have a nice printing tension on your, on your mesh. So this is a 200 mesh count screen. Um, anything over 160 is going to tend to be yellow and it has to do with uh, exposure for um, photo emulsions. So the color of the screen lets the color of the photo emulsion accept light and get exposed. Um, whereas lower mesh count screens like 160 and lower are going to be white, tend to be white. And again, it's because you use a slightly different emulsion for different thread counts of uh, screens. So you can see this one's seen a little bit of action. It's got some stain on it. Um, the red stuff here is just the glue that's holding the mesh down to an aluminum frame. You can get ones that have wood frames. Sometimes they'll have routed 
lines in them with cord that's holding the mesh <clears throat> into the wood. Um, that's all very traditional. That's how I learned to uh, screen print using screens that were like that with uh, the cord. And that way you can pull the cord out, pull the mesh off and replace the mesh easily. Whereas this, I have to cut this out, sand this off and then send it away to get it restretched um, by somebody who has a, a tension, like a hydraulic stretching machine. And then they put like a glue that holds it down. It's, it's red. All right, so um, because this is 20 inches by 24 inches, I went ahead and bought a two foot so 24 inches by 48 inch piece of MDF. And then I had them cut like, I think it was like 12 inches off one side. And I just have that sitting somewhere else in here um, because they didn't need it to be quite that long. Although if you're in a rush, you can always just do that. Just leave that remnant on there and then cut it off later. Um, but I wanted it to be bigger than my screen so that my screen could fit on here either direction. Uh, but primarily when I'm printing, I'm going to print it with the orientation where I have like, you know, sort of my horizontal width and my horizontal width of the board, you know, those being parallel with each other. So what I like to do, and again, you don't have to do this. You can just mount the clamp, clamps down, make sure that back edge is flush and straight with the board or use a ruler to bring it in from the edge a little bit. That'll be a little bit stronger. If you go right up to the edge, it wants to tear the MDF. So if you're unfamiliar with what you're doing and you're being a little rough with it, you can break the, the like a little chunk out of your board and the clamp will come come loose. It happens at school a lot with the little printing boards we have there. And this is exactly what the interest students on campus use. We have I think 10 or 12 of these little portable boards. If you get really seriously into uh, screen printing, there are uh, vacuum tables that have little tiny holes drilled in them and that sucks the paper down and holds it in place and your clamps are mounted just like they are with this sort of system here. And so what this does is when these are clamped down and holding the frame, every time the screen pivots up, it goes back down in the same place. So once I know where I'm printing on my paper, I can mark those edges. And again, I'll go over that in a later demo. But once I'm doing that, it's a... Uh, it lets me just register to the paper exactly each time, which is really nice. So this is just kind of like a mechanical tool to help me with that. Um, obviously, if I had like some friends here, I could have one of them hold the board, the squeegee, or sorry, the screen down, and I would just pull the squeegee and do that. The problem with that is that then they have to line it up for me every time and hold it in place while I pull the squeegee. So this lets it be kind of a one man or one person operation. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the thickness of a straight edge here to tell me where I want the edge of my clamps to go. And so I want them really, you know, as close to the edge as I can have them. They don't need to be on the very edge because I don't want them angled in and, you know, kind of having a precarious grip, a grip on the frame. I want the frame to be, you know, grabbed, but just an inch or two in from the edge is, is kind of ideal. And then I want about the thickness of duct tape on one side, just a little bit more than that. And that'll make sense in just a second. Well, a second, sorry, in a couple minutes. So once I get that placed on the board, I need, need my drill and I need that Sharpie again. I'm going to go ahead and mark where the holes are for my clamps. I'm just going to set this aside for a minute. So I want to bring this to the edge of my table so that when I'm drilling, when I'm drilling, I'm not drilling into my table. I'm kind of, you know, missing it if I go through. I don't need to go all the way through. But just in case, I want to go about a half inch in. If I go through, it's not a big deal, but again, I don't need to.
And I have done this without pre-drilling, but I found that I always get kind of a weird mound on the bottom of the printing board that causes it to set a little, you know, can cause it to set a little funny on whatever surface it's resting on top of. Um, and also I'm more likely to either break the screw or not get quite as good of a grip, you know, as it goes in. Uh, when I'm building these at school, sort of in a, a more permanent fashion, I'll actually put a little bit of wood glue in there, um, especially with MDF, just to kind of help it be more rigid to the, you know, to the um, to the screw once it's in there. Sort of just holds on a little bit better. It's not like it sticks because of the glue, but the glue keeps the MDF powder and residue from the drill, um, you know, kind of held in place. So it just sort of holds on to the screw a little bit better, I think. All right, so I can bring the screen and all that back over here. And I'm just going to get a regular Phillips head screwdriver. So I'm going to get them all started, kind of loose just by hand real quick. And then I'm going to get a Phillips head screwdriver and do it, tighten them all the way down. So if you have an impact driver or you want to use a, uh, you know, a, a Phillips head bit for your, for your uh, drill, you can. Just be careful you don't over tighten it because that'll just tear the MDF as it overspins. Um, and then it's not really held in place. It's not really gripping into the, into the board and it'll, the screen will be kind of loose when you go to print. So just be aware of that. I'm going to turn on the time lapse now. Um, and you guys can watch me put in some screws that way. Mm -hmm.